Hello, Abraxas here, and we'll be playing some Universe Sandbox 2. So, I just put my microphone. So that's a good way to start the video. Um, I got a suggestion here from, well, a lot of you guys. I'm not going to mention any specific names because this one's actually been suggested a lot to me. And, I mean, I didn't really feel I needed to make a video on it, but I guess I should since I'm actually receiving this suggestion a lot, and a lot of people don't know exactly what will happen. So here is our sun, which is currently in a main sequence stage, which is the kind of second stage of a star, or you could say third stage. Basically, what'll happen is you'll get a supernova event. So how can I actually make the sun go supernova? Um, I think I could just blow it up, and that, that should be enough to do it. So it's probably under actions, um, powers, explode. Um, sure. Ah, oh, yeah, there we go. So you got a supernova, which will is a big explosion of matter from a much larger star. And once this all cools down, it will basically become one of these clouds that you see here in the background. Basically, a, a bunch of intergalactic dust and matter. So you'll end up with a huge cloud of dust. And what will essentially happen from there is... Let's go ahead and just reopen the simulation you'll end up with a much smaller object. What'll happen is this dust will eventually work its way into a disk, kind of like you'd see around um, Saturn's rings, for example, which is not actually demonstrated in this game, I don't believe, but imagine there was a bunch of rings around Saturn or rings around the sun, which the sun would actually start off as a brown dwarf. So if I slow down the game here so we don't actually have everything freaking out. A lot of this dust will eventually collect and become, well, a brown dwarf or a gas giant. And uh, let's see if I could just demote it down into a gas giant real quick, which I am trying to do. This is actually backwards what would happen. Okay. So you would end up with a gas giant, which you could only imagine it being like a lot cooler or something like that. No, I guess that's not working. I can't seem to cool it off because it's so big. But if I if I slow it down, it'll it should cool down. Yeah, the surface temperature is 683. Let's see if I can. Yeah, there you go. So you end up with a gas giant. This would probably be like one of the most massive objects in this system because other things like planets and stuff would also be forming around as like the uh, kind of dust cloud orbits around this larger mass right here. And then eventually, as you saw, just kind of in reverse there. It would collect in mass until eventually it becomes a brown dwarf, which if I hit play should happen rather quickly. So as you can see, there we go. Well, it already flashed into a proto star. So there we go, There's a, there is our brown dwarf, which as you can see is glowing, but it's not actually glowing very bright. In fact, if I were to drop the sun next to this right now, you can see that the sun is significantly brighter. It would instead turn into something like Proxima Centauri here, a red dwarf as it continues to collect mass. Because what this will do is it'll become like pretty much so massive that it'll actually achieve fusion. Which is basically what makes a star a star. So let's go ahead and do that. And there we go, now it is a red dwarf. Now as it collects, it'll keep growing and growing. Until basically it turns into a yellow dwarf. Now, in Space Engine, the sun is called a yellow dwarf, but it's actually in its main sequence phase, so it's actually a yellow main sequence star. Whoops, I've accidentally uh, decreased or increased it too much. I'm increasing it by radius, as you can tell. So let's see if we can get that up to one sun real quick. Well, that's 1.2 suns. I'll just adjust that manually. So there we go. Now we have our sun at its current date. Um, I'm sure I've probably messed up these orbits ever so slightly because of messing with that, but... Uh, what I'm going to do is I'm going to turn up the speed to about an hour per second. So that's good enough. Actually, let's speed that up a little bit more. Look at five hours per second. So we could actually watch some of these planets orbit around. Okay, so one way to actually do this in the game, now that it's in its main sequence phase, is every billion years in age, the sun is going to increase in luminosity about 10% as the sun actually expands, as it slowly burns its hydrogen and basically creates helium. So here we go, let's go ahead and just start increasing its age. 
let's view this in millions of years. But currently it's 10 billion years old. Is that correct? Okay. Is that 10 billion? Let me see. Yeah, I do believe that's 10 billion. Okay, so now it's 10 billion years old. It's gone up by about 2 billion roughly since I started pressing that button. And it's not going to gain in mass, it's only going to gain in volume. So everything should maintain its orbit just fine. But every billion years or so, it's going to increase by roughly 10% in brightness. Um, that's what it's going to do up until the end of its life. So let's go ahead and just keep increasing the age. So the sun should start expanding. No, that doesn't seem correct. Hmm. That's actually making me wonder if this is actually supported in the game anymore. Because I am running the alpha version of the game. So increasing its age doesn't actually seem to be yielding much results. In fact, I don't think this is any brighter than the sun originally was. In fact, I don't think it is. Hmm. Well, that's not what I wanted to do. I couldn't really cancel that, I already left clicked on accident, and there it goes, I, I found a new way to actually make orbits, I never knew that was a thing, so that's really cool to know, but here we go. So increasing the age does not actually seem to be doing much in this version of the game, so I will be right back real fast. And at a snap of the fingers, here we go, we are in Alpha 18, the, actually uh, I don't know if this is still the current build of the game, but the previous build of the game. As you guys know, I've been uh, running Alpha 19 for all of my new simulations, since that's going to be basically the new standard of the game. So here is the previous version, which, if you look at the background, I mean, it just looks almost graphically dated now. Because <laughs> the uh, new background is a little bit more contrast and stuff. I actually think... I actually think I like this version of the Milky Way, it just doesn't have like the image resolution of the new one, but nonetheless... Not going to, going to be uh, distracted too much by that. Let's go ahead and turn up the age on uh, this version. So this should have some effect. And is it actually doing anything? Actually, yeah, you could actually see it expand. Oh, okay. Well, apparently I just caused it to go right through its Nova Flash. Um, whoops. Okay then, let's just uh, reopen this simulation. Okay, so here is our sun. Let's uh, just slowly increase its age. Which I think roughly at like 8 billion years, it's going to... Uh, you can see as I increase it, per every like billion years or so, it, grow it grows ever so slightly brighter. I'm not sure if that's really going to show up well in the video though. But here's the sun growing pretty big. Um, the problem is, it's not actually growing too much, the edge is just increasing, so... Bye. No, that doesn't seem to do much. So increasing its edge doesn't seem to do too much. The radius should actually increase, in fact it should increase pretty much to the volume of about Venus. Or maybe just short of Venus, so it should be relatively big. Um, I want to see if I can actually simulate that. So let's just manually increase the radius. It already turned into a Nova Remnant. It's because I have Realistic on. So let's run the simulation one more time. This time going over here, locking the mass, and turning off Realistic. And now let's turn up the radius. No, oh, the mass is not locked again. Okay, there we go. So let's see if I can do this without, you know, blowing it up. Okay, so here we go. This would be essentially what the expansion of the sun would kind of look like. So it would basically consume mercury, just like so. Mercury is now gone, and it should grow to about the orbit of Venus. So we have Venus there, probably cooking away. And the Earth, probably not faring too well. In fact, its liquid oceans would probably melt away. Let's uh check that out, or rather evaporate away. 
So here's our Earth. Which actually doesn't seem to be too affected by this. As of yet, anyways. I think the temperature was climbing. Oh, yeah, it is. But it's climbing actually very slowly. No, in fact, it's still going through its normal, like, year yearly fluctuation of temperature. So, Earth is not actually being affected by this in the game. I don't really know why. Probably because the surface temperature of the sun has not been increased at all. But, uh, essentially it would expand like this, and Earth would just kind of evaporate away. The surface, is, surface ocean would be, uh... Basically thrown out into the outer solar system. And then, eventually, what will happen is the sun will go through a nova phase. Basically, I don't know if it actually went through that, but I'll increase the age and manually make it do this. And what the nova phase is, is basically all the helium that is now around the outside of the sun will very quickly burn away. Let's turn realistic on. And there is our Nova Remnant. So all the helium would basically just burn away and flash into carbon. And then you'd be left with this, basically the core of the sun. A Nova Remnant, or a White Dwarf. And for a short period of time, I do believe this is, yeah, significantly hotter than the sun. So everything around the system would be kind of, th like, thrown out like this. But, uh... It would also get very, very hot, but not too shortly after, as the age increases, it would also get very, very cold. So let's hit play. I'm just going to let the sun, or earth, and other planets just kind of fly away. So as the years increase, it should start cooling down, but I don't think it's actually going to do that. But over the next maybe trillion years or so, or 100 trillion years, we don't really have an estimation on this. We have a different theoretical thing of what would actually happen after it goes through its nova stage. Because once it's actually going through the stage, it's incredibly stable. It's not going to actually go anywhere. In fact, it's going to remain like this for, as I said, maybe even up to trillions of years. So let's just go ahead and slow down time here. And you can see that as I slow down time, much like a, let's say, ice skater spinning on ice, if they pull their arms closer together, or pull their arms closer to their body, they're bringing more mass to the center of their body, and they start spinning faster. Well, that's essentially what's happening here. So you have something that's actually spinning incredibly fast. Neutron stars would spin even faster, basically resulting in pulsars. But as it goes on trillions of years, I'm just going to simulate this by dropping this to zero Kelvin. That doesn't seem to have worked. Let's turn realistic off and drop this to zero Kelvin. There we go. This white dwarf would essentially cool down and eventually become a very, very cold star. And this is what we call a black dwarf. And this is basically the end result of our sun. But we're certainly not going to see that in our lifetimes or, well, really, our entire system, if it actually lost as much mass and the helium was thrown outwards, would essentially just fly off over time, which I don't know if that's actually going to work in this game, but let's just go ahead and fast forward and just watch all these planets just kind of fly away. We maintain some of our orbits. In fact, Earth is actually orbiting rather close. Very cool. I expected it to actually just be thrown out. There we go. And our Earth is very likely turning into an ice ball. So. That is essentially what would happen during the lifetime of our sun. If I messed up any of these facts, well... <laughs> whoops. But, uh... If you guys actually want to check out possibly a better video with probably more explanations than this, I would check out, uh... Anton Petrov's video on He actually has one of this pretty much exact same suggestion. What would happen over the uh, course of the sun's lifetime. And, uh... Yeah, I do. I do recommend checking that out. I will have it linked in the description and possibly the comments. So, yeah. Anyways, for all the people who've been asking, that's roughly what would happen to our sun, at least what we predict. Uh, I might have gotten some facts wrong, but, uh... That's if I recall correctly, that's about what would happen, um... Anyways, if you guys liked the video, please leave it a like, and if you want to see more videos like this, 
please do subscribe it really does help and i will see you guys in the next one oh and if you have any corrections for me do do drop in the comments below because well i'm always here to learn